All right, let's get into the deep dive. We got Burt Breer, we got Amina Smith, Tom Giles back with you. And uh, Amina, I'll start with you. Yeah. Like, wh what do you think of the Mac Jones situation, some of the reports that are coming out today? Look, I'm not a doctor, but I, you do a quick Google and you'll know that in order to come back from a high ankle sprain, it's about six to eight weeks, right? Yeah. And you're saying it's a severe ankle sprain for Mac mm -hmm. Jones. So I take a look at that and I say to myself, what are we doing here? Why are we even having this conversation where, oh yeah, I'm in meetings. Like, of course you're in meetings. You're Mac Jones. You're the franchise quarterback. You're supposed to be in those meetings, but I don't expect him to be out there in that game on Sunday against Green Bay. It would be the silliest thing ever, Bert, to see Mac Jones playing in that game. Here's the biggest problem, the name of that injury. Mm -hmm. It is the worst named injury in all of sports. Like people hear high ankle sprain and they think, oh, he sprained his ankle. That's not what this mm -hmm. is. This is basically almost like a torn calf. Like it's, a, it's, it's ligaments that are being stretched out yeah. and it's something that can get worse if you play on it. And I, I actually think the name of this injury does athletes a disservice because it makes it sound like it's something that you can play through because everybody sprained their ankle. Right. Is it, possible, is it possible that the severity of the ankle injury or that, the injury itself isn't what we originally thought it was? I, so I know people around Mac were telling people earlier in the week that this was going to be six to eight weeks, which is where the surgery part of it came in. And I think what people need to understand about the tightrope surgery, which is what everybody's talking about here, A, he saw his teammates, Tua Tungabaloa and Jalen Hurts go through it at Alabama. B, Tua's results weren't all that great. His first Game back from his second ankle surgery in 2019, he wound up dislocating his hip, mm. which was obviously a major issue for him going into the draft in 2020. And then C, this surgery itself, players don't want to get it. It's considered a little archaic, a little barbaric. Does it work? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. The idea of the surgery isn't to fix the injury, it's to get you back as mm. fast as you possibly can. So if Mac is looking at this and saying, like the doctors are saying to him, this is a four to six week injury. There's no way he gets it because yeah. he says to himself, well, the tightrope's only going to get me back within four weeks. So if he's not getting the surgery, that's a good sign. If he is getting the surgery, that usually means it's an eight to 10 week injury and you're looking at trying to do something to hasten your return. So the other interesting thing to me, too, about today's report is that, you know, the conversations we've been having over the last couple of days, you know, wondering are Mac mm -hmm. Jones and Bill Belichick aligned on this because you know it almost you, you could have you could have wondered if you know Bill and the Patriots maybe you know they want him to have the surgery maybe they want him to come back and Mac and his camp are on a yeah. different page but when you read these reports and Mac Jones is you know letting guys know hey don't count me out this weekend which by the way you know like I could almost hear him saying that like with a sense of humor oh, and definitely. kind of like you know he's got he's got a sense of yeah. humor but are they almost like together well, in cahoots on this where, where they're trying to the gamesmanship, you know, that right. angle? So, like, I think, first of all, like, for a good reason, NFL players in general don't trust team doctors, you right. know. And I, and I think that that's like a, a really, really common thing because there are some conflicting interests. Players want their careers to extend to 10 to 15 years. They don't want to do anything that's going to do long term damage. A lot of times teams are living in the here and now and they want to get the players back as fast as possible. So it's not unusual that a player would get a second opinion because maybe he doesn't trust what a team is telling him. In this case, if Mac's second opinion was that if the second opinion he got was this guy that, that you can get back within three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, well, then the his point of view and the team's point of view should align. Because then there's no reason to get the tightrope. You don't get the tightrope if the doctor's saying you can rehab and get back from this in four weeks because that won't make the return any faster. It's if there was universal agreement that, hey, this is like a two-month injury. Right. That's where if somebody was saying that, you might get the player and team fighting a little bit over whether or not he, he gets the surgery. I almost look at four to five weeks, Giles, as a little bit too soon. I mean, yeah. you talk, again, like just the severity, I think it is misleading, Bert, when you talk about a high ankle sprain. <laughs> yeah. People hear it and they're just like, oh, okay, like no big deal. But it is a big deal. Like most guys, they come back between six to eight weeks. And then if they do come back early, say it is that four to five week span, that's an injury that's going to like linger the entire season and right. then also hurt you down the line. So even if you go into 
into the offseason, you're trying to, you know, make sure you remedy that that injury. That's going to be something that's hard to do. So, I mean, if I was Mac Jones, I would look for towards the future where it's like, OK, let me just rest right now because the schedule is going to ease up after Green Bay. You don't need to rush back. Mm -hmm. Just rest right now and make sure that your career is safe on the back end. I think we're almost doing him a disservice. Well, that's what I was going to say. Why, like, why, 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 why do we got to be talking about day by day? Well, I think we're doing the player a disservice by talking about his toughness. I, I think people who have followed Mac Jones and know his history and have talked to people who know him very well, both from Alabama and with the Patriots, would never question his toughness. Mm -hmm. His toughness is not in question. And I think we're doing a disservice by talking about his toughness because that – that presupposes that the right thing to do is for him to push through it, right? Like that's implied then, that the right thing to do is for him to push through it. A, this is a player who is very cognizant the way all of Alabama, all Alabama players are of the long-term effects of things, that he is a corporation unto himself as a pro athlete. That's number one. Number two, I don't know if it's in the team's best interest either that he rushes back because if he rushes back, this is an injury, like Amina said, that you can re-aggravate, mm -hmm. that can linger, that could turn him into a sitting duck for the rest of the year if he rushes back. So I'm not even sure, like absent surgery, right? I'm not even sure that rushing him back and, and encouraging him to come back before he's ready really serves the team's interests either. Yeah, and honestly, I don't question Mac Jones's toughness at all. I don't know where that narrative comes from because we've talked about it time and time again that he's an ultra competitor out there on the field. I think we all know that Mac Jones wants to be out there just as much as anybody else, but also it's important to take care of that injury first and kind of take care of your career as well. And Curran brought it up as well. I know we're going to talk about Brian Hoyer later in the show, but... Would you rather have Mac Jones with, with one ankle out there or, you know, Brian Hoyer with two healthy ankles, fully healthy, going up against the Green Bay Packers? I mean, it's you also have to consider the guy's limitations trying to play injured, which is, you know, I look at. I think with a lot of injuries, I would consider uh, with a lot of other injuries, I would consider the competitive element of it. But the nature to me, and I'm not a doctor. I want to make sure that's clear. <laughs> I, I'm not an orthopedic surgeon either, Bill. Um, I, I, I think with this particular injury, it's something where I don't know that the competitive interests are primary. I think you have to look at it, like look at the season as like a mosaic, right? Like in the, the, the season, the, the player that you get in week 15, week 16, week 17 at quarterback could be affected by decision making that you execute now. Mm -hmm. And so if you're making a decision in week six that could give you a lesser quarterback in week 16, that's something you have to consider. And I think with this injury, that's a part of the equation. Yeah, that's definitely a part of the equation. And again, like I just I understand that Mac Jones would want to be out there. It just doesn't seem like a smart decision to me. I mean, again, would you do it for that one game against Green Bay when you have 17 games throughout the whole season? It right. just doesn't make any sense to me at all for one game against Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Which is why I think it's important to just highlight that other tweet by Giardi where a player is basically saying, hey, this is a long season. You know, mm -hmm. you, you well, got to be smart. And that's in these the other thing. I mean, the players know who the tough guys in the locker oh, room yeah. are. And, like, I don't, like, it. a lot of these guys are going to tell their teammates, look, dude, you got to take care of yourself. Like, it's like this along the same lines of, like, you don't get into another guy's money, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's the same sort of thing. It's take care of yourself. Like, don't do something stupid. 